Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Tarot by Janine. Look who I have. Uh, I'm interviewing Ishmael Peraz. And I actually interviewed him early on in his uh, coming out, shall we call it, <laughs> mm -hmm. when he finally uh, decided to uh, share all his wisdom with us. And he does tell a story, and often you, you probably heard his story about uh, how he was kind of a hermit for many years. And how would you how would you talk about that, Ishmael? Well, I, it took you so long to kind of introduce yourself to us. I was waiting, waiting for the right timing. You know, not uh, not the collective wasn't ready to really understand the you know the the connection to the cosmic uh, information and the galactic history until the right time. Uh, so. Like I said in some of the interviews, my manuscript was actually finished four years prior to my publishing. Mm -hmm. So um, I was told that the you know humanity isn't ready for this next level disclosure, uh, but in time they will. And right when I was informed to publish the book, that's when they said, "All right, it's time for you to come out. People are ready." And lo and behold, you know, it's like I'm reaching so many people. People are thanking me. People are like, "Whoa, you put filled in a lot of the blanks for me." You. I put things into perspective like I've never heard before and you, you explain it so well in other dimensions, so on and so forth. And to me, that was just, it was all about the right timing. It was mm -hmm. all about the right timing. Even for me, when I first heard your video, the very first one I heard, I knew right away there was something like it clicked and all of this information just made more sense to me. And I know a lot of people have been out there talking about some of the things you talk about, not always in the exact same way, but some of that information was out there for a really long time. But the way it was presented just wasn't resonating with me. And then uh, right, right away, as soon as I heard you talk, I was like, okay, this guy's got somehow some in, uh, you know, with the off world entities, energies, and a way to communicate that for humans. And, uh, in a reading I did early on, and a lot of people will remember this in the tarot on the tarot by Janine channel, I got that this fellow, so I get this as you, Ishmael. So this king of, of swords was going to come and really relate in a way uh things that really help us understand what happens in all the multi-universe. And I don't know if I say the words right, but uh, it to me, it's such a big mystery. I'm more of an earth energy. I feel really grounded earthy and I have a lot of earth in my birth chart, but that someone was going to come along and really be almost like uh, a go-between for the off-world entities to really talk through, almost like um, a galactic, uh, what, sort of a royalty in a way it felt like a royalty or someone who was just so well versed in what's going on over there so just a part of their world and also have a foot in the on the earth plane and then be able to explain it to us earthlings <laughs> i feel like that's you right away when i met uh, you on i mean of course i haven't met you in person but online i just had this feeling that must have been you how do you feel about that does that make any sense to you Yes, it does. It actually um, resonates because I was informed by the higher intelligences that I've been, you know, downloading information from that uh, I would be some sort of a liaison, a um, ambassador to the earth representing the galactic and cosmic community when the time was right um, that I my information and my presence would would you know would come into the limelight and and they were correct, you know, they were absolutely correct. And it's funny because six months prior to, I I, I say going back to like January February. Prior to me really coming out to, into the scene, I mean, I was still active on Instagram for maybe two years, uh, building a following, uh, but not really reaching as many people. Um, I was informed. I got a download saying, Ishmael, you're going to be very busy in the next three months. Something's going to happen. You're just going to blow up everywhere. And then when I received that download, I was like, all right, I got to prepare myself mentally and emotionally, um, you know, because I understand that I'm going to be extremely busy after this thing you know, after this, after this, receiving this, I guess, prophetic warning, you know, I was told yeah. to just prepare myself mentally for what was going to come. You know, they were informing me that not only was I going to reach many people, but I was also going to trigger some. And these are the people, uh, certain individuals out there that, uh, you know, are kind of hating on me and stuff and, you know, saying bad things about me. But they told me, you know, don't worry about those people. You know, every that happens to everyone. Every every time somebody comes into the limelight, there's always an antagonist. There's always some sort of, uh, uh, there's, you know, people that either envy you or people that just, yeah. you know, they just don't resonate with you and, and they'll do everything in their power to try to bring yeah. you down. And they told me, you know, don't even worry about that. 
you know, everybody gets that. And I was like, okay, of course, you know, no problem. So I was kind of prepped, prepped mentally before it happened, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been getting them coming after me also, Ishmael. And uh, (laughs) to me, it's like, wow, I must be really popular because they're wasting hours putting together uh, t- looking through all my old videos and putting together little tiny pieces to to make a storyline, their own storyline. So it seems to me it's really just uh, like out of jealousy. It could even be out of unhealed energy. Like I did readings around the person doing that for me, and it felt like past life, literally a past life enemy. I'm not taking them personally. It's like, whatever. They're not touching me. People that yeah. know, they just know. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, why give your energy? When we react, we give our power away. So I just ignore it. You know, it doesn't even face. Me. Yeah. You know, let, the, let the haters be haters. They're, they're yeah. just, all they're doing is it's a reflection of their inner un- wound, you know, unhealed wounds, like you said. Exactly. And, you know, to me, it's all about being the better person, mm-hmm. you know, always shining the light. Exactly. Yeah. And we don't want to get pulled down into that. So let us know what you have uh, going on. What can people sign up for classes still? How are things going? Uh, Do you have a website? What can you share with us? Well, I share a website collectively with my, um, I guess, instructors in the mystic arts, my my, uh, colleagues. Uh, It's called themysticarts.org. And that's where people can sign up to teach to um, access my class and my course that I teach called Starseed Cosmology Course. And I do have a few spots available for the December class, uh, okay. just a very few. Uh, so if you, you know, it's, I know it's about three months from now, but it's it's worth it. You know, the, the faster you get this information, um, the faster your activation. That's just the way I see it. Because many people that are already taking my class and have taken my class since I started back in June, um, have been giving me so much positive feedback about how, you know, it's helped them understand uh, life uh, better. It's helped them uh, actually realize who they were, their mission, their purpose. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, some people have even told me that they've been activated, that they're actually now getting downloads and, and they're in touch with their spirit guides and their, their intuition has enhanced. And, and to me, that is like a blessing, you know, to know that I'm helping others activate as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, I I would agree that it is time and timely for that kind of thing. Everybody needs to really open up to their true potential. It's like, I feel like upgrades have been happening. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Ashley and I, the the one I do the deep dive Fridays with, her and I went on a road trip recently, and we literally felt like her eyesight upgraded, uh, her hearing and sense of smell upgraded. Both of us felt those things. And also my driving skills, which sounds weird, but uh, I'm 61 and I'm, I can be a nervous Nelly driver, especially at night. And I felt like I was uh, upgraded. I was fearless and not, not being reckless, but absolutely knowing my capabilities on the road and my vehicle was, it, it felt like a whole different uh, sort of energy. Does that make any sense to what might be happening for humans right now? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, at the cellular level of, of our, I guess, DNA level of reality, it's it's all changing. You know, new codons are activating, new strands are coming online. I think by now, most of us already have the third, fourth and fifth strands activated, which wow. explains the enhanced perception, the enhanced level of intuition and, and, and um, you know, clairvoyancy and all that stuff. That's all enhancing right now. Mm-hmm. It's just the beginning. You know, I mean, you know, once we activate the other dormant DNA, we're going to be like a whole new different creation. Mm-hmm. Only different species, yeah, advanced species. Now, would that just be star seeds having this, or, or just it could be everybody if you're just aware or awake? Well, the the star seeds are going to be the ones with that are going to access the superhuman powers and abilities, like you know the ability to perform telekinesis, the ability to control the elements with their mind, uh, the ability to transfer their thoughts, to bilocate, to be in multiple places at the same time. Uh, among other powers, but the newbie souls are going to be upgrading in increments. So we're going to have different types of upgrades. Not everybody's going to the same upgrade, depending on how old your soul is, how much experience you had in the multiverse, because many of us have have had, you know, billions of years of experience, uh, which are really the oldest of souls. Uh, Those are the ones that are going to go into using 100% of their full genetic material. Um, And then, of course, there's going to be increments underneath those. And then the the newbie souls, which consist of the majority of of Earth, um, indigenous, uh, I guess, uh, Earth, what we call Earth Terrans in the galactic community, uh, they're going to go up in increments. You know, they're going to go up in increments, and that's probably going to 
and that's just the way it is, you know, because they're yeah. still new there. It's, it's, they're still going to have to learn how to learn how to use these abilities. And, mm-hmm. and those, the, the instructors in, once we enter this new world in the fifth dimensional earth or the age of Aquarius, um, the star seeds are going to be the instructors in mm-hmm. a sense where all the academies of, uh, in schools of, uh, the mystery schools of, uh, of ancient, uh, times are going to be re-emerging. And so the, you know, all that stuff is going to come back. The temples, you know, the pyramids, oh. everything's coming back. Wow. I can't wait. (laughs) And it makes sense that there's uh, the pushback is almost going back to like the dark ages where we're being called out as witches and warlocks and not yourself, maybe, but they're definitely coming after me in that way. And it's such a really like almost like the burning times all over again, like the witch burning times is like the last push of that kind of uh, that was the way they dominated over the kind of uh, intelligence that tarot cards bring and astrology and numerology like they they had to call it evil and that's the that's all they got right it's like oh it's like evil okay uh, and then, interesting you know, what people fail to understand is that even jesus and mary magdalene were alchemists they understood numerology they understood astrology mm-hmm. uh they were healers they were they understood the mystic arts and they were masters of the mystic arts and then that's going to be a huge shocker when all this information comes out that even jesus himself was a master alchemist mm-hmm. magician like healer whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. yeah i believe it he came to me once it was years ago uh and i'm not like uh i don't go along with organized religion but you don't need to. I mean, organized religion, I think, was created by, you know, the cabal, really, Absolutely. or, you know, all kinds of baddies, but in particular, the cabal to keep repress information and keep people fearful. But uh, Jesus actually showed up to me and was a really it was in a really amazing energy and experience and I knew right away he'd been married had children like the whole story about like it just everything clicked in it was like I picked up on as if I was reading him or he was allowing me to read his real life story and this was years ago so it was it's fascinating that uh that he would come and show up to me (laughs) right I was like wow I was honored but I don't put anybody above me Ishmael I'm kind of funny I I don't think anybody's above or below me or my guru, but I, I don't think they're below me either. So how, what, how do you feel about that? Do you think there's a levels uh, or if we all really learn our true selves and really come into ourselves, do you think it all gets sort of equaled out? What do you think? Well, nobody's above anybody. We are all equal in the eyes of the one creator, prime creator source. In fact, we're all in expressions of the one. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I explained in some of my earlier interviews, uh, every single one of us is 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 the God source. In you know, it's it's a fragment of the God source, mm-hmm. and you know, in that sense, we're all one. So basically, what is the only thing that is above us is just our holy divine Christ over self, which is the holy I am presence. Mm-hmm. Once we merge with the holy I am presence, we become like the Christ. We be, you know, and and what I mean by that is we begin to access levels of consciousness that is all inclusive to all living things in the cosmos where we begin to see ourselves as a cell, but yet at the same time as part of the collective and one with everything that is. And that's what I mean by accessing cosmic consciousness, which is what we call Christ consciousness. And we do that through, you know, through simple um uh, I guess a simple ways of seeing things as one and the same, you know, uh, unity, consciousness, brotherhood and sisterhood, you know, balance, harmony. We incorporate all those concepts and we live them. And that's how we do that. But yeah, no one's above anyone. You know, there is in the spiritual community in the galactic community. There is no hierarchies as far yeah. as like, you know, one person calling it the shots. You know, that's that is Luciferian. That is what Lucifer and the fallen angels did. Right. That is what the cabal has been trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is, it, it, it's sort of like a council where everybody could come together. And and that is the true meaning of a democracy. It's a council when people come together and really everything's really administrated by councils of elders. And what I mean by elders is these are like really advanced souls that uh, use their their uh, gifts to to better the greater whole. Mm-hmm. And so in, in the greater scheme of things, we, we move back to that egalitarian system of equality and where everyone is is inclusive and everyone is is as um, important as everyone else. There is no, you know, caste where it's like halves, half nots, middle class, none of that stuff. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. And in a way, a indigenous North American indigenous people had things like that. Like there'd be a chief 
but before the chief could change anything in the society, he'd have to go to the council. It was like a council of, and in particular, women. So yeah. these elder women, and they were known as the Crow Society. Not all uh, Indigenous tribes had this, but this was fairly common in the Indigenous North American tribes. They had the Crow Society. And the Crow Society, so crows in Native mm -hmm. Indigenous mythology, and you, you probably know this, but they represent karma, karmic law, and the balance of the universe. So crow energy, it, it's different than uh, how other cultures might see crows and also the way they see ravens is different. But uh, so the mythology says they go to the Crow Society and they have to check in. And the Crow Society intuitively checks in with seven generations before and seven generations forward to make sure that the new law or what they're trying to pass in the culture is going to be OK for the people. Wow, that is fascinating because that's exactly how it works in the higher dimensions. Maybe they were onto it. Maybe they were uh, connected that way. Oh, yeah. I've always believed that the Aboriginals of Australia, the natives, the Navajo, you know, the, the Mayans and all those cultures were more spiritually advanced than the Western the Western world because they were in tune with Mother Earth. They were in tune with the elements. They understood the significance of the sun mm -hmm. as, as a symbol of, you know, the universal life force that, it, that gives us nourishment and all that stuff and how that connects to you know, God, which, which, you know, God is an energy source, you know, it's not just exclusive to anyone, it is mm -hmm. with every li living thing, and they understood that, and that's why I believe that they were more advanced than, you know, those that are part of the Western, really, Western culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd agree with you on that. Now, recently, and of course, we're all, we've all been talking about this, truthers have all been talking about this, but uh, the Queen, so supposed Queen of England, was uh, announced to be passed over. Now, uh, a lot of people know she passed over a long time ago, or at least we believe that. Wh mm -hmm. What are your feelings about that? Is it a marker, uh, even astro, like, uh, sorry, galactically, I want to say, like, it, it goes beyond just the queen died, right? Tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are around that. Absolutely. So basically, her elimination um, marks the end of what is known as the Luciferian control of the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, she was um, pretty much uh, what the in terms of a beehive, she was like the queen bee of the cabal structure. Mm -hmm. You know, she was even over the Pope and the Black Pope. Uh, many people believe that the Jesuit Supreme General was the beehive. You know, but no, no, it was ruled by the Queen. And the reason being is is because uh, her body has been used as a host by the Draco for many many years and so yes the alliance did take her out take out the original queen about i think two years ago and but again you know the cabal through the ai system they always create clones and that's how they kept the false image of her still being alive it was just a clone mm -hmm. and so that clone was also used as a host to draconian energies and get this uh, janine she was the reason why over eight hundred thousand children were, were missing annually 800,000 children. She was uh, at the top of this child sacrificing, you know, torturing of children, um, uh, sexual predating of children, and of course, the satanic rituals that took mm -hmm. place to sacrifice them to Belial Baal, which is Marduk, son of Enki, and we could get into that a little after. Uh, Molik, Molik, which is another powerful demon that the Cabal have been sacrificing children to. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, uh, the other person is uh, Molik Baphomet. Baphomet, yes. Mm -hmm. So those were the three, the yeah. three demonic forces that have been in control, and the queen, you could say, was their main uh, instrument mm -hmm. for the harvesting of all this androchrome and all this loose that they inflicted for for many years since her ring, of course. So yeah, she was known to be the most uh, wicked, you know, representative of the Luciferian energy on the planet. Wow. Okay, that just makes so much sense to what we've been hearing from so many different people like Megan Rose got on and she, she had a real emotional feeling towards the queen leaving and yeah, she had a huge reaction to it. And it was all about the children for her. So that makes a lot of sense. I knew she was uh, connected, but I actually thought the Black Pope might be ahead of her. But that's interesting that you are putting that in perspective for me. So this is a huge marker then. And it's interesting that they had her apparently passing over or dying or whatever at Balmoral, Balmoral oh, right? yeah. Castle. Yeah, so in Scotland. 
And that castle's long been known to be the hunting castle. Okay, so uh, they probably had a lot of those hunts where they'd uh, release children and the elites would hunt them at that mm -hmm. castle. Yeah, so it's interesting that I believe, how do you feel about maybe the White Hats being in control of this whole appearance of her dying right now? I feel that that is absolutely correct. You know, um, this gave them the opportunity to bring down the rest of the clones because that's what we're dealing with now. You know, we're dealing with just a bunch of clones because yeah. they're all being generated by AI. Because, you know, at the end, we are fighting a war against artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, again, you know, that war is not going to take place for another thousand years. We're at least going to have a thousand years of peace due to the sort of flash that is going to destroy right. the AI signal okay. and AI infrastructure. So we're not heading into a smart world Internet of Things, as many people believe, you know, with the, you know, the rise of what they call the Great Reset. That's all been aborted to, you know, okay. by the, yeah. I'm happy about that, actually, because I wasn't looking forward to that. I didn't like the sounds of it. Uh, but what I like the sounds of a thousand years of peace just to regroup. So we'll be ready for these guys when they, absolutely when we got it, because I'll be back here working it. I just know it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you are. You know, when we, ascend, when we transform into our new galactic bodies, Janine, you're going to be like a, you're going to be like a goddess. You're going to have amazing abilities. Love you know, so we're all going to be like superheroes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'll be ready for them. I'll tell you that. And I think I think a thousand years of peace is, is necessary after everything we discover, like uh, as we've been, you know, discovering all of these layers of things that have been going on, our whole world's completely collapsed. What we thought was true, we've discovered hasn't been. A lot of people are finding that really difficult. Myself, I don't, I, I must have known somewhere deep inside all along because it feels really easy to throw away. I never listened in school and I, I never believed any history anyway. And I don't read, I don't read books much. You know, maybe lately I'll start reading uh, uh, people, people like yourselves books and there's di various different books, but history books and books written by sort of, what's been the norm out there. I just never felt drawn to reading because I just knew they were all BS. Absolutely. I agree with you. That's why I was bored in school, you know, for the most part. <laughs> I would that, sit back in class and daydream and have visions. And so yeah. they would label me autistic because I was spare, uh, spacing off into space. Yeah. But really, I was just having visions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was spacing off too, but I was very social and chatty. So uh, they put me in the category of like basically a troublemaker. I ended up in uh, remedial classes. So like kind of a dummy. They thought I was just a dummy. Uh, yeah, me too. They called me dumb and stupid. And, yeah. you know, I, I got really bullied by both teachers and students oh. when I was in high yeah. school. I never, I got to be honest, I never got bullied. I'm not the type. I don't attract bullying. So they put me in remedial classes, but I was, I was like having fun and slacking off and enjoying myself and quite happy to have the pressure off. You know what I mean? For And uh, so socially I was smooth. Like I was given that gift and that was good because I got away with so much that way. It's like I coasted through and just did a lot of this. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, thank goodness I wasn't bullied. And that's unfortunate that you were. But I am experiencing it now, but I'm learning, you know what, whatever, like, let them to it. <laughs> I'm not going to take them personally. Uh, so let us know what you think now going forward, the solar flare or flash is going to look like you you brought that up just a few minutes ago. And a lot of people are concerned it could even happen on the 24th. There's all these dates sometime before the 30th of September. This is the latest. Uh, how are you feeling about that and timing? And do you want to share your thoughts on that? Sure. So it could happen this month uh, just because of the fact that um, the Schumann resonance is no longer able to record the CMEs that are coming in. Uh, so the CMEs that have been coming in the last few months have been record breaking X class, mm -hmm. M class CMEs. We haven't seen CMEs like this for like over 12,000 years, which means that um, we're really getting close to that final release of the sun that is going that is going to pretty much destroy the wicked and eliminate all that is evil and uh, upgrade the righteous into this new heaven on earth that has been prophesied about. So, um, yeah, you know, it's best to be prepared in the event that it does happen this month. And from what I see is um, because of what's going on with, you know, with the war against evil, the spiritual warfare, um, it needs to happen sooner than later, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, we're, yeah. we're already 
humans on the earth have already dealt with the law. We've already suffered enough. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the time has come, you know, for our liberation. And so that's why I, I strongly think that it, it's going to happen very soon. Very soon. It has to. Now, in the event that it doesn't happen this month, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to happen. You know, it's going to still happen. I mean, I predicted in my book by no later than 2024. So yeah. I'm always, I'm always going to stick to my original vision. Yeah. Now, when you say prepared, what are your vision of being prepared? How would you prepare and how would you advise others to prepare? You have to stay grounded. You know, um, you have, it's, it's best to uh, give at least 20 to 30 minutes a day, whether it is through meditation or devotion and connect with the higher power, which is, you know, really what it is. It's your your divine essence, you know, which is the part of the divine source that is you. You know, so the more we connect with that aspect of ourselves, um, the more uh, secured we're going to be in the ascension. You know, mm -hmm. um, those that are going to have have it uh, very hard to undergo the transformation of the ascension are those that are still living in stress, anxiety. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, those that are still uh, struggling with depression and and, you know, their mind is scattered. And and that's why I always tell people, try to put all your focus and be mindful in everything that you do. Because by putting your your mind and your attention into the into the eternal now, you're actually co-creating your your version of heaven of earth. You know, by putting the the focus on the things that you like, you know, don't give um, don't give in to the negative propaganda of fear. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff is is designed to kind of throw us off of our off of our path. But yeah. it's, it's best to just you know, be mindful of what you want and put all your focus on the things that you want to manifest because that's how we're creating this new heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. And ultimately when the solar flash takes place, um, you're going to be experiencing where all of your focus and emotional uh, attention is going to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like you know, yep. for the most part, like wherever you put your focus, wherever, uh, wherever your emotional state of mind is, you know, you're creating the vibration that's going to match when once the, the shift takes place mm -hmm. you're going to have an equal match to whatever it is that you uh, uh feel and whatever it is that you think uh for the most part mm -hmm. now i just want to add for people uh some people write to me and they say well i can't meditate or i'm not attracted to meditating and they don't understand grounding and uh, the way the real simple way to describe it i personally don't technically meditate but what I do do is get into a zone that is beyond thought, right? That's what I call it. So some people might call that meditation. And I do it through music that I love, uplifting music and or through dance. So put on really good music and dance around the house or do something ritualistic that you set a dedication. So that's interesting. So dedicated, like cleaning the house. So that's a chore. So it's a physical chore, but it... Mm -hmm. It leads to, so I do it in a ritual way that is, uh, so I'm redoing all my altars. I'm recreating and touching everything around my home to reignite it with my personal loving energy. So that's how I do it. So some people may not like meditation, literally where you're just quietly sitting in a meditative uh, stance or whatever, that may not appeal to everybody. But I like to remind people, meditation is through getting out of mind into heart, soul. Would you agree Perfect. with that or? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, that's another, there's different modalities to get into that zone. Music, dance, Tai Chi, uh, yoga. Yep. Some people, you know, reach that zone when they're working out, you know? So yep. it all depends on, yeah, it all depends on the individual. You don't necessarily have to sit there and close your eyes and, you know, try yeah. to meditate 30 minutes. Yeah. There's different forms of, of getting you into that relaxed state of mind. And that's what I mean, you know, preparing yeah. for the shift and the great solar flashes, try to maintain that steady mind of just being calm at all times. Mm -hmm. because that's going to make the ascension process a lot yeah. easier when your body transforms. Yeah. So hoarding toilet paper and food <laughs> supplies and stuff that's not you're not recommending um, that's no that's scarcity mentality you know because once we transform in the fifth dimension we won't need any of that <laughs> okay okay yeah because i've been talking about you should keep a couple of weeks store on hand because it feels like there's going to be these false flags coming etc how do you feel about false flags do you think this this is coming instead or are there also going to be human like like created maybe false flags coming that'll disrupt things like internet like 
it, or is all of that just fear porn? I think it's fear porn. I think that the that the only thing that's going to disrupt the internet is the EBS when the Y heads decide to reveal the truth to the masses. You know, I, th I think that's the only thing that's that we're yeah. ultimately going to be experiencing pretty soon. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 ever since the queen was taken out, mm -hmm. um, it's things have leveled up. There, it was a sense of relief. The planet even felt it. Some people believe that there was some sort of colorful rainbow over the palace when that happened. You know, they saw this beautiful light as an indicator that things are now going to be better for the earth now that the yeah. queen is gone. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I believe that, um, yeah, you know, we don't have anything to worry about. You know, the new financial system is 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 ready to be rolled in now. They oh, not to mention she was. Mm -hmm. Um, in charge of the banking systems as well. She was also the protector of the Vatican's treasures. Mm. And, um, she was the reason why, um, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Maritime Admiral, Admiral Time? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, so she was the one that was holding that together. So now that she's gone, yeah, we're no longer slaves with the Social Security and uh, you know all that okay. stuff with our birth certificate that made yeah. us much a number in the system. Yeah. It's all eliminated now. It's interesting. I, I felt it right away when the day it was announced. I felt a joy. I felt really joyful all day. And I also have been feeling braver lately about things like I don't feel enslaved by taxes. I don't feel enslaved by and I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not giving anybody else advice. I'm just personally saying I personally don't feel uh, in any way enslaved by systems uh, like I have no fear like they can just uh, whatever whatever their stupidity is, I don't uh, comply and I'm not, I'm not feeling at all uh, connected to it, all those systems. That's awesome. That means you broke away from the matrix. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that feels well, good. Yeah. yeah all the system is coming to collapse anyways. Yeah. You know, the IRS, know. Yeah. it's not going to exist anymore. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I want to keep this short and sweet. I, I'm putting this on uh, my quick chat, so we're going to keep it short and sweet. And I really hope to be able to connect with you now that I got a platform again. Uh, it was I was uh, we I missed you a couple times there, and I really apologize for that because I know my audience probably really missed you too. So thank you so much for coming on. Do you have some parting words for us as we go into this this phase, this uh, ramping up phase? I call it. Um, just you know, I just wanted to. I guess, point out that um, there was an attempt to infiltrate the Galactic Federation by Enki. Mm. You know, Enki was uh, using women, abducting women for the last 10 months yeah. uh, in order to uh, harvest their DNA so that he could use that to access uh, the fleets of the Galactic Federation and infiltrate them. But um, I, I am also been told that... Um, the Federation is is also on that, and they're not going to allow him to fully infiltrate the Federal Federation. Although he is he is back, and you know, and he is actually building an army of drones uh, by admixing it with uh, galactic DNA extracted from our own humans, females rather, and also mixing it with cybernetic AI DNA, Draco DNA, and something else to create. Uh, their own version of this super race, which I believe uh, is going to cause the war at the end of the thousand years. I believe that that's the army that we're going to be fighting, that it, the army that Enki is building. So I just wanted to let everyone know that, um, you know, he has returned and um, he's uh, been trying to thwart things for the White Hats, but it's not going to work because of the fact that, uh, you know, this earth is the most important planet in the multiverse. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, give a warning to all the women out there you know if you see a metallic silver ship or a bronze silver ship cylindrical those are sh the motherships that are working with enki and all they want to do is harvest your dna to do not consent to the abduction at all because you know from what i understand is he abducted thousands of women already wow he's been harvesting their genetics that's that's unbelievable i feel like it was put on hold somehow because we've got a hold or if if even the DNA that they've collected, somehow they're just going to hold it uh, for future use. So that would make sense to the uh, shelving it for the thousand years or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that, in the meantime, we're going to have to come up with ways to empower ourselves so we don't get used that way. 
mm-hmm. like you mentioned, but also there might be a way in the thousand years that we can disarm or or go back in there. I hope there's a way we can uh, take that back or whatever. Do you think there's a way we could do that? Uh, well, I believe that uh, we just we win that war. Uh, I don't know if we take it back because he, he is building uh, a drone army of, uh, yeah. uh, you know, using Anki, uh, Anunnaki genetics with galactic genetics and AI genetics to create some sort of a, um, a species, a cybernetic species that um, could just literally just take over worlds and suck the soul out of mm-hmm. life, you know, suck the life force out of species, including humans. And so, um, I think that at the end of the millennium, that's what the Bible refers to as the last war, but Mm -hmm. it's already taking place in the future. And of course we do win. And what I mean by we do win is that that's going to give us a thousand years to access levels of power uh, naturally without merging with technology Mm -hmm. uh, that is going to give us the upper hand and the destruction of this army that he's currently building right now. So, wow. Okay. Well, that's a good heads up though, because I can start focusing my intention on, yeah, protecting the women that get approached. Exactly. I'm going to be yeah. sending them all my protection, that's for sure. So, yeah, good. Thank you for the heads up. You're welcome. So anybody promoting Enki is mm. is part of that false light. And just be aware. Mm, okay. It's okay. been compromised. Anyone that's promoting Enki has been compromised. Okay. Good to know. Thank you so much. Any other parting words for us? Uh, yes. Uh, stay healthy. Don't forget to drink a lot of water. And most importantly, love yourself and don't care about what other people think. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. No wonder I like you because you're saying exactly what I always say. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Those are like exactly things that I would say were up foremost for everybody right now, learning to love themselves. We mm-hmm. become a lot more compassionate when we love ourselves. It's really hard to to be compassionate and loving to others if you haven't figured that one out yet. So yeah, thank you for saying that. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks again, Ashmel. And uh, we'll say goodbye for today. Thank you, Janine. You have a wonderful day. You too.